On today's episode, we're going to answer the age-old question, can a $50 pedal not suck? Let's see. K-Line is a company that has always intrigued me. I first saw them at the NAMM show way back in the day, maybe 2014, when they brought by one of their power supplies and said, we can make this for you and put your name on it. So that's basic OEM uh, private label services. You see that where X Vive has a tuner, but Electroharmonics has the same tuner. So that's a really common thing in the pedal industry. I've never done that, but I don't see a problem with it. And that's where I first saw them. And then I learned they kind of came onto the map in 2011. There's a guy named Gary there, there in Shenzhen, China. He was an engineer, got into pedals. Uh, and then 2018, they brought on a guy who became a friend of mine over Facebook. His name's Shane Perry. Now, I had seen pedals that I really enjoyed. I had one of these uh, for my son to noodle around on guitar. It's basically a power amp. You can plug headphones into it. It also has a rat and a delay pedal. It has little speakers. It was kind of cool and I enjoyed how it sounded. Uh, I'm a big fan of this Pegasus, which is a Klon replica. You've seen this on a live show I did about Klons. And then you've also seen the big orange, which is an orange amp style distortion. They also have some other products. And to be honest, I wasn't a super fan of a lot of the old branding, but they always sounded really good. So when Shane comes on in 2018, they kind of do a rebrand and the pedals, in my opinion, get way more interesting and more palatable to what I like. And so I'm gonna go through those. And then here's a disclaimer. A lot of times I see people saying, oh, JHS getting paid promotion on products. No, that's not the case. Uh, and especially today, a lot of these Shane sent me and I've bought several of these for myself. And just to reiterate, I show what I like on the show. I have no attachment to this brand. And that's why this show is the way that it is. I don't do reviews. I don't do these sponsored type deals with companies uh, in this sense. So yeah, I'm just gonna show you some pedals that I like that they make. I'm gonna be really honest about it. And uh, it's my opinion though. So get, uh, get your hands on them yourself. And let's look at these. These are basically $50 or $40 pedals I'm gonna show you. And I like these, so I'm gonna play them and you decide. First up is the Simon Super Delay. Again, I like where they've gone with the look of these pedals. And a lot of this is because Shane coming on, working from Nashville, kind of working with their fan base on Facebook and things saying, hey, what do you want these to look like? What direction should we go in? And so it's a complete rebrand. And I like how this looks. It's quirky and fun. It has an old school vibe. And the functions are really simple. So you have time, mix, and repeats. And then you have a rotary that is really straightforward. Digital delay sound, analog delay, and a tape delay sound. Now this is a fully digital pedal. So when you're on analog or tape, it's an algorithm. It's a simulation, something like you'd see with Strymon or with my three series or whatever. There's DSP in here processing, emulating those sounds. And I think they're very, very good. This is currently sold out at the time of filming. Uh, and Shane says they're actually gonna put a couple of these back in stock. So hopefully they're back in stock when this airs. But yeah, I'm gonna demo this. I'm gonna play a really simple lick and I'm just gonna rotate through the sound so you can hear it. Digital is gonna be a perfect replication. So echo, echo, it's exactly gonna repeat what you played. When you go to analog, you're gonna hear a real lo-fi repeat happen, a glitchiness happen. So that's emulating a Bucket Brigade chipset. Think about a Boss DM2 or a Memory Man vibe. And when I go to tape, you're gonna hear a flatness. You're gonna hear, uh, it's funny to me, I always think of tape as sounding gray. I know that probably doesn't help you, but it's a very flat, dull, gray, tonal perspective of a repeat. And there might be a faint little warble in there. So yeah, let's check it out. Thank you. 
Next up is the M fuzz. I don't know what M stands for, but it's like there's something there. This is a big muff variation or replica or clone or something like that. To me, it has some differences in the fact that the tone control sweep is different and I really like it. So from that perspective, I know it's modified. I haven't seen the schematic or anything, but this is a classic big muff with an altered tone stack is what I believe is going on. And I like the look of this again. It's got an old school vibe and it's 50 bucks, like $50. That's three coffees, is that right? Three coffees? Yep, that's fine. Yeah, three coffees. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta drop D and play a bunch of bull crap. That's what I just did there. We're gonna swing it the other way, you know, offset, kind of shoegazy guitar, bull crap drop D. I'm gonna put on a fancy boy guitar and uh, we're gonna play through a Dumble style sound pedal here. It is the Enchanted Tone, highly prized overdrive. The current prices on a Dumble are somewhere around $100,000. Is that something like that? So if you buy a Dumble head and cab, 100 grand, or you buy this for 50. Wait, $50,000? Whatever, $50, $50. I don't know, I guess that's your choice. So I'm gonna play my fancy boy guitar through this, and I'm gonna bull crap some like Larry Carlton stuff that I don't know how to play, but I'm gonna be pretty confident in how I'm trying to play it. And then you can also be the judge in the comments on how bad I suck, but then be the comments on if this sucks. I don't think it sucks, that's why I'm playing it. But really it's up to you, because what I say doesn't matter. If you think it sucks, I guess it sucks. If you think I suck, I guess I suck. Here we go. <laughs> This next pedal is one of those that's sold out and really its origins date back to the 1860s when Lewis Carroll wrote Through the Looking Glass, a nice little book, and then Walt Disney, I believe, turned that into a cartoon. That was before Pixar, you don't know your history. And uh, it's called The Wonderland, there's a rabbit on it, and it says ambient reverb machine, curiouser and curiouser, but there's another link, it's in the 70s. It's uh, Brian Eno, he created the sound of shimmer for pianos and keyboards and then it ends up in records like The Unforgettable Fire by U2 because he produced that record. And yeah, this is basically, you know, a $50 pedal that takes you back to the 1860s. I'm a big fan of that shimmer sound and that does it really well. Uh, next up is a distortion pedal. It's black with three knobs. It is a tribute to a very famous late 70s distortion pedal. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, it's a rat. No, it's a DS1 and a very good take on the DS1. Notably again in the tone control section. A DS1 when you dime the tone control 
it basically kills you. Your skin falls off and you can't breathe. But with this one, you turn it up and it stays smooth. It's not harsh or brittle. Uh, the osmium, osmium, one of those. It's an element, element 76 apparently. I'm trying to tie the name together and I was like, 76. Well, the Boss Compact Series didn't drop till 77. The DS1's later than that. I don't know. It's a cool name. I get the idea. It's a chemical element of rock. Maybe. I don't know. Here we go. Next is a $50 pedal that has seven sounds. I like this one because it is a multi-effect and it's a really cheap multi-effect that is good for any pedal board. This could be a catch-all extra. So you have a space on your board and you're like, I kind of want some different options here for different songs or to noodle around. So it's called the Multi-Mod and it's a modulation multi-tool. So I'm gonna go through these effects uh, chorus, flanger, phaser, doubler, vibrato, tremolo, and pitch. Really basic modulation sounds, and you have a shift or speed, depending on what the effect algorithm you switch to. And then you have uh, kind of a depth and a mix control. I like this for $50, it's wild. It's a perfect pedal to put after your drives before your delays and just have some fun sounds. And did I mention it's $50? That's seven divided into 50 is like, this is free, I think. The sounds are free. The last of this series within their brand I want to play and show you is really cool. After this, I'm going to honorably mention a bunch of other stuff really quickly. But this is called the Jaguar. It is classic high gain distortion. This is a Marshall Brown sound in a box. So this is a vintage Marshall head, completely modified high gain sound at the edge of what it can do. And so a good example is Eddie Van Halen's tone. Now, I can't play like Van Halen. I don't even know where to start, but I do kind of know that you really got me progression. So I'm gonna butcher that and then noodle around and make you think I know what I'm doing, but I don't know what I'm doing. And then you can, in the comments, judge me harshly. Uh, I am gonna reach down and mess with this bias control. It's cool because the bias is all about the voltage. And on the old Marshalls, they used a variac and they would vary the voltage of the Marshall head. That's part of the brown sound. $50, $40, what is this one? $40, $40.
Hi, I'm here to talk about mistakes, like the one Josh just made while he was playing guitar. Sometimes we make mistakes and we just gotta commit to them. You know, when you're demoing guitar, when you're demo, when you're dem, when you're demoing guitar. <coughs> I really like these. $50 or less in this particular stage of the line, these single pedals. Some honorable mentions. I'm gonna mention a lot of things honorably and we're gonna edit the crap out of this so it's quicker. You ready? Here we go. There's the Queen B, it's a different flavor, and then you have the Mellow Overdrive. Reverb, I really like the old school reverb. It has church hall and room, and kind of a quirky playing music in an old diner vibe. Modulation, the Marina modulated reverbs. So it's not modulation, it's actually reverbs and modulation, and it has tons of cool sounds. I wanted to demo this, but I don't have all day. Next, the Wave Machine. This is a play on classic boss chorus. Stack Attack. This is a preamp overdrive and you can kick on compression. Then there's a bunch of two-in-ones and these are really cool, but they need to be covered at another time or you just need to go buy them because they're really cheap as well. They are called the DCP series. So like, look at this. This has overdrive voice overdrive. So three foot switches in this form. You have two gain stages, really cool. You have the easy driver EQ distortion. The Artemis Compressor Boost Sundance Special. I played this on a live. It is a fantastic overdrive with like a micro amp boost. What's not to like here? Stellar EQ Compressor. I think this is a bass player's dream personally. Acoustic guitar and electric guitar. Not only could you put this in front of your drives and hit any drive and carve it into something else, you could use it by itself. This might be the most usable pedal in their whole line. Is it exciting? Probably not. Is it what you need? Probably so. The Brutus, or Brutus, it depends on where you're from. I see this all over Instagram. It's a distortion and overdrive with the voice toggle. It's a nice color purple as well. Look at the purple. You don't see that shade of purple. That alone is worth the purchase. Am I right? Nightwolf, great name. Fuzz voice overdrive. So you have an overdrive and a fuzz face. Just buy these. The Andes, 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 are those, is it like the Andes mints? I love those mints. This has a bird on it though, so it has nothing to do with mints. I don't know, overdrive voice boost. Look at the form factor. This is nice. I do wear a size 14. Let me show you something. These are some of those giant horrible shoes from Walmart and these are size 14, so they're really giant and horrible. So there's a problem here for people like me. But here's the thing, not all of you have big feet, so buy these. The Key West, Overdrive Compressor, come on. The Devil Fish, Delay Chorus. This is one I really wanted to play, but again, I don't have all day. Tiger Shark, it's a distortion with a gate. And honestly, the tiger is kind of kind of baller. It reminds me of that golfer. What was his name, Jack Nicholson, Mick Nicholson, Tiger. There's a Tiger Golfer. Anybody here play golf? You got it, keep trying. Rhett plays golf. Ask Rhett Scholl. I don't know, I'm a working man. I play basketball and ride a bike. He plays golf, whatever, you be the judge. Today's record time is brought to you by 1998's End Serenading by the band Mineral. Mineral is a band that I like. They're a little obscure. They are Midwestern emo, that is a genre. Uh, you might be familiar with the Appleseed cast, bands like that. Well, Mineral kind of fits into that, in my opinion. Some of you are already butchering me in the comments over the different layers, sections, and blocks we need to put certain bands in. But to me, it's all Midwestern emo. Uh, I like this. I think it's a budget record. Maybe that's the tie. Maybe there doesn't have to be a tie. Sometimes Nick, he gets mad at me because I always feel like I have to tie it into the subject matter. But I really like this. Um, Love Letter Typewriter is my favorite song. A Letter is my other favorite song. So I like songs about letters, apparently. It's really beautiful. It's really strange to a lot of you, I bet. You're gonna hear a lot of capo Telecasters, raw amp sounds. His voice is gonna be love or hate. I love it. You gotta be in a mood, you know? You gotta be you gotta be a little angry, but a lot of hopeful. And then sometimes you're a lot of hopeful and a, a lot angry and a lot okay. This is the album for you. Check it out, let me know in the comments what you think. 
And if you know of their other work, tell me about that as well. I'll be really impressed by you. Thanks so much for watching this episode. If you liked it, please hit like. There's a thumbs up you can give that. I, I like the thumbs up. Sometimes there's like 10 people that thumbs down everything. Don't be the thumbs downer, be the thumbs upper. Subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon to get notifications of every future episode in the comments below as well. Let me know your favorite pedal that I played today. Let me know if you know about K-Line. Let me know your thoughts on K-Line or just, you know, share an old family recipe, whatever you want to do down there. Check out the link in the description for the Patreon page where you can join us in the archival of history with all kinds of fun perks that come from our end, you know, cool weird things that you'll only get from being a patron you just gotta go check it out to understand there's also djhsshow.com where you can buy swag you can see every episode ever filmed you can see all the records on record time you can waste a lot of your time but in wasting your time you've really used it most wisely at our website that's all i have for today go to k-line check out their website spend 50 dollars on a pedal you know not on coffee you don't, there's stuff you don't need. You know, I'm in the same boat. I need more pedals and um, I'm gonna spend my $50 more wisely now.